All right, in this video, I want to work out every single problem on your study guide one at a time. Uh, let's go ahead and start with number one. Number one is a pretty simple problem with a variable on each side of the equation. So you have a variable on the left side, a variable on the right side. And you want the variable on only one side of the equation. So you want to get rid of 6x or x. Either is correct. I prefer to get rid of the smaller variable, get rid of the x, and how do you get rid of an x? By subtracting x. And of course, remember, you got to do it from both sides. You could have subtracted the 6x from both sides, but I'm going with the smaller variable because it just makes the problem easier in my experience. When I do this, 6x minus x is 5x, the 3 carries over x minus x cancels each other out, so they're gone. So that's a zero, I'm not going to write it. All that's left is a positive 8 or just an 8. Now this is just like any other two-step equation, so this should be fairly simple. I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to isolate this x here, my only x that's left. I'm going to get rid of the plus 3 first by doing a minus 3 to both sides, of course. Once again, these cancel each other out by design, which leaves me with 5x equals to 8 minus 3 is 5. The last step I'm hoping by this point is fairly self-explanatory to everyone. Being multiplied by 8, uh, sorry, being multiplied by 5 here. I divide by 5 on both sides and I get x equals to 1. Because 5 divided by 5 is 1, 5 divided by 5 is 1. All right, any questions on number 1 before I move on? Okay, number 2 is coming up. So let's take a look at number 2. Same type of problem. I have 2x on this side, 10x on this side. I want x on only one side of the equation, so I got to get rid of this or this. I choose the one that's smaller. How do you get rid of a 2x? You do the opposite. You subtract 2x from both sides because it's a positive 2x. These cancel out because they're opposites. What's left is a positive 7 or just a 7. 10x minus eight, uh, 2x is 8x minus 9. All right, now it's a two-step equation, and I want to isolate this 8x. I'm going to get rid of this first. It's a minus 9. I'm going to add 9 to both sides. Which means these two are gone right here. And I get 8x equals to 16. And then my last step, again, should be fairly simple. 8 is being multiplied by the x. I did the opposite. Divide both sides by 8. And here, 8 divided by 8 is just 1. 16 divided by 8 is 2. And that is my answer. Let me know if you have any questions for number 2 before I move on. Okay, moving on. Let's take a look at number three. Pretty similar to number two. I have 13x, I have 11x. I gotta get rid of one of the x terms on one side because I don't want them on both sides. And once again, I choose the smaller one. They're both pretty close, but 11 is smaller than 13, so it goes. So I subtract 11x from both sides to get rid of the 11x on the right side. Here, they cancel each other out. 13x minus 11x right here gets me 2x plus 15 equals to 25, uh, negative 25, this minus stays. All right, my next step is to isolate this x here. I'm going to get rid of this first. 
what's in the opposite of plus 15 is of course minus 15 from both sides these are gone and on the left side I'm left with just 2x on the right side negative 25 minus 15 this can confuse some of you still this is a negative 40 they're both negative numbers they're going to combine to a bigger negative number now to get rid of this multiplied by 2 I'm going to divide by 2 of course on both sides 2 divided by 2 is 1 so I just have my x left here just like I like it over here negative 40 divided by 2 negative divided by a positive it's going to be negative 20 and that's it any questions about number three before I move on okay moving on to four all right with number four we have really one tiny thing that's different from the other ones is that we have this parenthesis with a three in front of it there's nothing I can do inside the parenthesis so I'm going to break that parenthesis down by distributing the three that's outside to everything that's inside so I get 3 times 4x and then I get minus 3 times 2 and all of that equals to 12x okay 3 times 4x is 12x 3 times 2 is 6, so minus 6 equals to 12x. I have an x on both sides of my equal sign, here and here. i got to get rid of one, but they're the same. So if I get rid of one, I get rid of the other one. This is neat, of course, until you find out what happens when I get rid of them. So I don't really care which x I'm going to eliminate, because they eliminate each other. And when I do that, this is gone this is gone so on the left side I'm left with a negative 6 on the right side I have 0 is negative 6 0? Uh, no, ne negative 6 is not 0 definitely not, negative 6 is negative 6 so in this case this is one of our problems where we write no solution or no answer or something of that sort. I'm going to write no solution because that's the most popular thing to write, but you can say cannot be solved, no answer, no valid answer, something of that sort after this statement and you're good to go. Questions for number four before I move on? All right, moving on to number four. Ah, five. okay number five again pretty similar to numbers two and three except it's a bit bigger all right uh, the only thing different about number five is that I have to combine some like terms and I'm going to do that first simplify before you solve x term here x term here I also have an x term here uh, I want to mark it but I can't combine this one with these two because it's being separated by that equal sign and then I have a constant here a constant here and a constant here so I can combine these two constants and I can also combine these variables but that's about it. That's all the combinations that I can make because everything else is separated on uh, the other side of the equal sign. All right, so let me go ahead and do that. 5x plus 3x. Remember, this minus belongs to the constant. So 5x plus 3x, that's 8x. Can't do anything to that constant, so it just writes over. 17 minus 23 that minus does belong to the constant so 17 minus 23 that's negative 6 17 minus 23 
is a negative 6 plus 12x. Now this looks just like number 1 and 2. Uh, let's see here. I got to get rid of either the 8x or the 12x. Doesn't matter which one, but one of the x terms has to go. I go for the lower one, as always, or the smaller one. Gone, gone, which means I get negative 2 equals to negative 6, 12x minus 8x is a positive 4x. I'm going to continue working right here. Uh, so I'm just going to rewrite this problem right over here because I'm running out of space because I'm trying to save paper. All right, sometimes that backfires on me. Now this is just a two-step equation that I'm going to easily solve. I want to get rid of this first. It's a minus 6. I do a plus 6 on both sides to get rid of it. Minus 6 plus 6. So these two gentlemen are gone. Negative 2 plus 6, that's going to be a positive 4 equals to 4x. Divide both sides by 4. Arrow here. And of course, x equals to just 1. Sorry, didn't mean for it to be so small. All right, questions on number 5 before I move on to 6. All right, moving on to number 6. Uh, number 6 has some elements from number 3 uh, and 4 in there. So, first things first, parenthesis. It's got to go. Nothing I can do inside of it, so I'm just going to distribute. I'm going to write this part over as is because nothing changes. And I'm not going to go through the whole distribution. Suffice to say that 5 times n is 5n. 5 times 20 is uh, 100. OK, so that was just my simple distribution. Let me make sure that number 6, uh, yeah, that looks right. So my next step is I have something I can combine right here. I have like terms, 5n and 20n. I want to go ahead and combine those. They're like terms, so why not? That's 25n equals to 5n plus 100. OK so far. Now I have n on two sides of the equation, n here and there. I want n only in one place. This is the smaller one. So it goes. OK. These cancel out. And then I'm going to continue working right up here. Uh, 25n minus 5n is just 20n. This is 0. So all I have is 100. So this is gone. 25n minus 5n is 20n. So just 100 carries over. Then I just got to divide both sides by 20. This looked complicated, but this was actually a very simple, easy to do problem. With n being equal to just 5. All right, any questions about 6? We're almost halfway there. All right, terrific. Uh, moving on to number seven now. All right, with number seven, this is our first graphing problem. These are super simple. So let's go ahead and get them out of the way real quick. 
Let's start with number 7. X is greater than 2. You're just supposed to graph it. Let's get our, not cheat sheet, you guys don't like that, but our aid sheet or whatever. Um, and let's take a look at it. X and the alligator symbol is pointing its large end. So if the alligator symbol is pointing its large end or the mouth of the X, you're going to go in the right direction. Also, you're going to have an open circle. Right direction, open circle. So if the larger part, the mouth, faces the variable, right direction, open circle. Our starting point is at 2. And that's it. That's all there is to that problem. Pretty simple. That was the first half of 7. Let's do the other half of 7. In this case, we have the variable facing the sharp end of the alligator symbol or its back. When that happens, you go left. It's a simple alligator, not a combo. That means open circle. So left, open circle. We're starting at zero, so open circle there. And we're going to head left. And that's number seven. Please make sure you know how to graph these because, well, they will be on a quiz. And in your future math, they'll hunt you for as long as you're in math. <laughs> All right, so if there are no questions for seven, let's move on to eight. Hey, look, eight is just like seven with just slightly different symbols. Now let's do number, or second part of number eight. This one, don't get it confused. This is not this. Sharp end of the alligator symbol is pointing towards the X. This is actually the same thing as uh, this right here. Sharp end pointing at the variable, sharp end of the variable, which means we're going in the left direction. Once again, this is a closed circle because it's one of those combo symbols. So left direction at negative 2. Close circle. I made this one on purpose this way to throw some of you off. This is not going in the right direction. Point the end or the small end of the alligator symbol points at the X. You go left. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at the first problem. I'm doing these in reverse because I actually messed up on the first half so I had to fix it. Yay me. Um, anyways, so we have the large part of the alligator symbol facing the X, just like here, large part of the alligator symbol facing the X. That tells us go in the right direction. Combo symbol, close circle. So close circle heading in the right direction because the large part of the alligator symbol is pointing towards the X. Close circle heading in the right direction. Starting point is 1, so close circle right here at the 1. And then we are going to head off in the right direction. And that is number eight. Any questions for eight? Okay, moving on to number nine then. We're pretty close to being finished. Now let me get the blank side so it doesn't bother anyone. All right, number nine. So let's take a look here at number 9. It's pretty similar to 7 and 8, except we have a, uh, a compound statement here. There are two things happening to the variable at the same time. And with these statements, I always advise that you look at one and ignore the other one. All right, look at it, number 9. It's pretty similar to 7 and 8, except these are compound inequalities. So there are two things that are happening to the variable at the very same time. And with these types of problems, again, I do advise that you look at them one uh, part at a time. It just makes your life a lot easier. So I'm going to look at this part first. X is greater than 1.
the large part of the alligator symbol is facing the X, which means we go in the right direction. It's a simple alligator symbol, which means open circle, starting at 1. Going right, open circle, at 1. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. At 1, open circle, heading right. Then I want to take a look at this. X is less than, which means the sharp part is pointing towards the variable. This tells me if sharp part always go left, and uh, it's still a simple alligator symbol, which means open circle. So at 5, I need to have an open circle, and I'm going to head this way. Now in these cases where you actually have them intersect, the part that you're interested in, the solution set, and if you remember that key term, is going to be right here. From here to here. So x can be in between 1 and 5, it can be 1 or 5, but it can be anything between 1 and 5. So that's that. That was the first part of 9. Let's take a look at the second half of 9. With the second half of 9, I'm going to do the same thing. We have x is greater than or equal to 3, which is right here. We have the large part of the alligator symbol facing towards the x, which means the right direction. It's a combo symbol, which means it's a closed circle. So right direction, close circle at 3. And that's Discovery Club outside. And then right here, sharp end. I'm not sure if you can see that. There we go. Sharp end facing towards the X, which means left direction. It's a combo symbol, which means it's a closed circle. So left direction, and it is heading, uh, and it's a closed circle at 1. So closed circle at 1, heading left. All right, any questions on number 9? I promise you there will be a problem like this on the quiz. Actually, be just like this one where you have to graph two parts. All right, moving on to number 10. We are almost finished, and I keep saying that. All right, for number 10, you have a word phrase that you need to translate, and here's the phrase. Fewer than 10 students rode their bikes to the game. So fewer than. That's the key word that you're looking for here. So fewer than is one of our keywords. Here it is, fewer than. And in the case of fewer than, you have to have the alligator symbol point its sharp end at the variable. So sharp end has to be at the variable. Also, fewer than is a simple alligator symbol. That means open circle. So open circle, sharp end at the variable. The variable. I'm going to go with B for bikes. So B for bikes, sharp end at the variable, and fewer than 10. So I'm going left, and it's an open circle. Again, because fewer than sharp end. At the variable, sharp end, always go left, open circle. Open circle, head left, and you're finished. Translated, graphed, done. All right, moving on to number 11. Any questions before I do?
All right, let's take a look at 11. With 11, you are supposed to translate a problem and or a word phrase and then graph it. So here's that phrase. Let me quickly zoom in on that. Uh, let's see here. You guys can see that. It says a number x is both less than 1.5 and greater than or equal to 0. So you have two different statements there. The first statement says uh, less than. Let's find less than. Less than. Point the end of the alligator symbol has to face towards the variable. And they chose us, they told us to use x a number x. So I'm going to put x in the middle. Less than 1.5. So sharp end has to be towards the x. So less than 1.5. And then they also told us greater than or equal to greater than or equal to right here. Large part of the alligator symbol is facing towards the x and it's a combo symbol. So large part facing towards the x, and it's a combo symbol, greater than or equal to 0. That's it. We translated it. Now we just have to graph it. It should be fairly simple, I hope. So first, with these cases, let's look at this. x is uh, pointing its, or the alligator symbol is pointing its sharp end at the x, which means left direction open circle at 1.5. So I haven't labeled these. Probably should have. 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2. So as we said, left direction for this open circle at 1.5. 1.5 is right here in the middle. And we are going to go ahead and le head left. Then, let's take a look at this right like this. X is greater than or equal to 0. Large part of the alligator symbol faces the X. And it's a combo symbol. Large part facing right here the X. And it's a combo symbol, which means go right, close circle. So at zero, we're going to go right, and it's going to be a closed circle. And we're going to go ahead and head right. In these kind of problems where you have overlap, you're only interested in the overlap. Which means our solution is somewhere in between zero and one and a half, and zero can't be an answer. So zero all the way to one and a half, but one and a half cannot be an answer. All right, that's 11. Let's look at 12. A questions on 11 first? 12. A number y is either greater than or equal to two or less than or equal to negative two. Two keywords, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. All right, not a problem. Uh, let's look at them both right away, and that way we don't have to spend a whole lot of time. Uh, less than or equal to. Sharp end towards the variable, and it is, it's a combo symbol. Greater than or equal to. Large end of the alligator symbol towards the variable, and it's a combo symbol. So I gotta have both types of combo symbols with my number, and they told us to use Y. So I'm going to put Y here, and i got to have the combo symbol face both ways. That's one way, and that is the other way. i got them both. Greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. And it was greater than or equal to, to 2, so the 2 has to go here. Less than or equal to, negative 2. The negative 2 goes here. Questions on how I did that? All right. Then... Let's go ahead and graph it. Again, I didn't label my number lines, so let me do that real quick. Oh, 
Okay. Right here, large part of the alligator symbol faces the Y, which means I'm going in the right direction, close circle at 2. Small part of the alligator symbol faces the variable, and it's a combo, so I'm going left. Close circle, combo, left direction. That's 12. Let me know if you have any questions, please. All right, moving on to number 13. So moving on to 13. 13 was a fairly simple problem. All you have to do is find and fix the error. Let's find and fix the error. B is greater than 5. Large part of the alligator symbol faces the variable, which means I need to go at the right direction at 5. That's right. I'm going in the right direction here. But that's not the error. Simple alligator symbol. Should it be a closed or an open circle? Open circle. I have a closed circle. All right right here. B is less than or equal to 2. I have the sharp end pointing at the variable which means I need to go in the left direction. That's correct. Combo symbol. Is that open or closed circle? Closed circle. Which means right here should be closed circle. Like such. And those are the mistakes. So that was a fairly easy problem, and then, yeah, that, that's it. Any questions on 13 before we finish? All right, thank you very much.